Oh, um, you, you think it's odd that I'm always kneeling here? I think that uh, if people see you kneeling in the park here, they could call the ranger. So I would just oh, I see. ask you to think about that a little <laughs> bit. Ranger danger? Ranger danger. Well, or they might figure but out I'm, figure out I'm, I'm, I'm after the mushrooms, huh? Yeah. So um, here we have a, a nice grouping and not staged. Look at the abundance of all these little, I guess it's milky caps, the way they're growing. Um, and there's one already fallen over. Let's see that one. When you say not staged, does, does that mean that a lot of these frames we're getting have been staged? Well, I thought you guys went to the forest and prepared the mushrooms for me. You didn't? <laughs> I was so touched. Let's see, okay, now the milk. Now these guys are milky caps or milk caps. And what's typical for the milky caps is having milk. And when there's enough moisture, um, oh yeah, here, see how now these white drops develop? So that's the milk coming out. So the genus is known as Lactarius. Lac, milk as in galaxy or lactation. And um, it's very typical, especially for one group of mushrooms. Now, these little orange guys, um, there's a whole range of lactarius that are in this smallish size and orange to reddish, red-brown colors. Um, pretty hard to tell them apart. And people pay a lot of attention to them because within this somewhat disappearance, there's the candy cap. And the candy cap is a mushroom, when you dry it, it develops the same chemical as maple syrup has. So you get a, a sweet maple syrup taste out of a mushroom and you can do all kinds of cool things with the candy cap because um, it has that sweet side to it and that really tasty side. And it's intense taste. So when I go in a house, I can smell usually if people have candy caps somewhere in a jar or not. It is that intense and it's a really nice odor. And for years they go. So here this one won't be a candy cap because the milk is too white. The candy cap has a very watery milk. And um, also when you look for candy caps, you want to feel the center of the cap. If that's a little rough, it's a good indication. So this one is a little rough here actually, um, but that white milk tells right away can't be a candy cap. So Lactarius, a uh, big genus, closely related to Russula, uh, to the brittle gills. And um, I think none of the milky caps is dangerously toxic, like organ failure or anything, but some of them are really spicy. I mean, intensely spicy. And, and, and definitely um, others have tastes that won't be enjoyed uh, culinarily. Unless you do a little bit of kitchen alchemy and you do like hot water, uh, like 10 minutes in hot water, half an hour, and then cold water, and you can leach out some of the spiciness. Especially Eastern Europeans have all kinds of techniques down rendering uh, un what we regard as inedible uh, milky caps and brittle gills, rendering them edible and pickling them afterwards. So, um, but cool group to know. The milk always gives them away. Often you wonder, what is this? What is this? And then Oh, there's milk, milky cap, easy. <laughs> yeah, what a beautiful spot here, huh? So it's so nice also to find your mushrooms when the ground is a little bit more open and you have that mo moss coverage. I don't know what makes the difference, you know, why certain areas the Oregon grape or the um, salal is not taken over but for looking for mushrooms it's so helpful when you actually see the ground and here when we look at the ground there was a dog brought a nice stick um, there is a couple here of the russulas the russulas are the brittle gills um, and these guys uh, many of them are past their prime and um, but you see there's there's a reddish color in the caps so there's some vinaceous uh, tone in here. And we lift that up. And then you see from touching, there's some browning in here. 
I would have hoped a little bit for some more reddish tone in the stem. Let's see if we get that out of another one. Oh yeah, look, see that red in here? So these are shrimp rusulas. And the shrimp rusulas, um, we have so many rusulas, they're pretty hard to identify. They're all root associated. So they're ectomycorrhizal. And here Douglas fir hemlock um, team up with them. They are, a common name is brittle gill because the gills are quite brittle. Well, this is an old one, but they break when I go here with my finger. And um, the shrimp rusula is recognized by, sometimes you can pick up an odor of fish. Uh, maybe there's a little bit, so you smell between the stem and the gills, or you go to the stem base and you, you scratch off a little bit of the stem base or you cut it off and you, the odors are more pronounced in the stem base. I smell nicely fungal, nothing fishy. Um, however, um, this is a shrimp rosella because of the red in the stem and the, the, the browning when touching and the reddish, the vinaceous color in the cap. You will have another moment where the fish odor comes out when you fry them up. Then there is like a, a, a wave of fishy odor that cooks usually away. Uh, there's other regions, uh, regions like in Colorado, the shrimpies, the whole kitchen smells like shrimp by just sitting out in the kitchen. So, you know, that shrimp odor is relative. Nice. Um, they are called brittle gills because the material is really brittle. And rusulus, they break like chalk. See here? It breaks like chalk, makes even a sound. Which, when you take many other mushrooms, they're fibrous. They have a different um, cellular structure than the rusulus. Lactaria, Lactarius and Russula um, are their own fungal evolutionary branch when it comes uh, to the, the gilt mushrooms before everything was clustered together, but DNA tells us they're their own evolutionary branch and um, the structural differences are pretty evident. Also, Russulas can live very long, so they will outlast many of the regular gilt mushrooms and, um, and um, and, and that structure is really evident when you fry them and you eat them. So there's no mushiness in that mushroom. They get firm. Um, I enjoy that quite a bit. And I think it's uh, people underrate uh, these, these russulas. And part of it is because we have so many species and it's hard to put a name to many of them. But uh, we have nothing out here in the Pacific Northwest that would cause organ failure. So, um, you know, you might get an upset stomach or uh, maybe throw up. One of the russulas is called emetica. <laughs> it makes you throw up. Um, it's very spicy, so I have not talked to anybody who had thrown up after that. But now people are much more open to spiciness and some of that spiciness might be interesting. Uh, a lot of the spiciness actually cooks away, so you, you probably should I don't know, if you want to work with that, maybe you dry them and powder them and use that as a spice, which people have done when there was supply issues like after the war, during the war in, in, in Europe or so, when pepper was rare, they would use uh, spicy mushrooms for that function. And then, of course, we have always the ultimate test for the russula, is it a brittle gill or not? And here, highly scientific. And then you count and 80, 92, 93, 95, 98, 90, 100. If you get 100 pieces or more, you have a russula. So, um, oh yeah, and there we have even some still That's sticking kind of a to the one, tree. Really. <laughs> very mushy, this, this guy. It was a very old one. Um, but uh, yeah, russulas as such are fairly easy to recognize, but when it comes to the species, um, a real challenge but um, you don't need to know every mushroom to enjoy a few mushrooms. So and here's the problem. I see and you shouldn't throw every mushroom against the tree. Well, yeah, because now people are going to come walking along here and they're going to go, they're going to get into a big philosophical discussion about what caused that. <laughs> oh, that's that there. See, it's still coming off. Um, I think it looks like probably a barfing donkey. You have donkeys <laughs> out here? Yeah. 
yeah so we are still here in this nice mossy spot and we spotted some russulas some more russulas and these are and i'm sure most of you who've looked for mushrooms ran into this kind of big white funnel shaped mushroom the short stemmed russula and these are all uh, unfortunately a little oldish but um, from down below they look better and so the short stem drusula drusula previous short stem then that funnel shape of a cap white color um, actually we have probably three species un people applied the name drusula previous for three different species dna is telling us one of them is uh, quite spicy but the other ones are mild tasting and actually uh, thanks to Chad Hyatt, who has a beautiful mushroom cookbook out, um, he introduced us to using these for hummus. So just use the mushroom after being parboiled or cooked, maybe 10 minutes, whatever, and then um, grind it up like chickpeas and add whatever you would be adding into hummus. Um, lots of garlic, olive oil, tahini, maybe some little bit of coriander, salt, pepper, lemon whatever and then it is quite enjoyable but otherwise it's a very bland mushroom that doesn't offer much but hey there we found a way how to use it and um now i'm much happier when i find it <laughs> in this state now this is too old but um they are very abundant and everywhere so we'll put that back and it will still produce its spores for quite a while if it's in its little microclimate here. Um, this seems to be a great spot for russulas because that's another spot. Oh yeah, here there's, right? there, look at that. There's, well, that one looks maybe in better shape. And there's even a young one coming. Yeah, so more russulas. Oh, here there's a little bit of red in the stem. And there's also, is that just dirty hands or is there some browning? I think there's some browning and then we would need to do the taste test to see if it's a mild tasting one and then it's something out of mm, mm. i think i get the spiciness Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yep um so not one of the shrimpies um it's sharing it's close enough in regard of cap color the red in the stem the browning that's all uh keeps it on track for shrimpy but the taste test the taste test is um um tells us this is not a shrimpy okay i need here something to <laughs> cleanse the palate <laughs> Ooh, that that's a spicy guy and, and sometimes, you know, you have to wait quite a bit. So it's like the first 10, 20 seconds, mm, mild, mild, and then suddenly. <laughs> oh, ooh, okay. Um, that's enough spicy russulas for the day. <laughs> okay, so here are quite a unique, um, impressive little mushroom because it has such a beautiful purple color. Um, it's a Lacaria. Lacaria is a genus of ectomycorrhizal root associated fungi. And um, they. Uh, we just see so much more if we uproot this poor guy. Um, you see the beautiful, intense purple color of, of, the, of the gills. The gills are pretty uh, white spaced. This one is young, so it will get. It will still grow quite a bit um, there's some fibers or hairs on the stems and when they get old often they lose the the purple color it, it goes much more brown grain gray brown or so um, they uh, this one is Lacaria amethystio occidentalis so that's our mushroom with the longest species epithet or species name is that uh, called the Western Amethyst or yeah, something like that? And the Western Amethyst Deceiver. Oh, okay. So the Lacarias, their common name is Deceivers, um, probably because of the color changes. 
um, you know that when they get a little older that they lose some of their color and a whole bunch like on the east coast there's one where the cap is dull brown and down below it's intensely purple um, so you know maybe it deceives you but a uh, little mushroom they they're all edible the lacarias but nobody really uh, collects them they have good structure but not that much in taste a bit of port wine changes uh, the equation there's a bigger one that got unfortunately already trampled we do pick all our mushrooms here we showing you uh, all right along the trails um, you know since we're not supposed to leave the trails um, so you can see the gills yeah. are pretty far apart on that yeah one. here you see the, the gill one. spacing is pretty wide so we, we, we pick all these mushrooms we're showing here right along the trails um, because the idea is that we don't leave the trails and there's so many mushrooms are visible just already from the trail uh, actually a lot of them are much easier visible when you follow the trails because the dense undergrowth of the salal and Oregon grape and, and sword fern and so on uh, is hiding a lot of mushrooms so um, you know if you get excited about the mushrooms we're showing you here in Pridal Trail uh, please know um, that you have to stay on the trails and also that horses rule so when there's uh, horses coming you have to uh, make eye contact with the riders and the horses and let them know you're there and you know get out of the way of course and then that usually works out quite fine um, so just certain things you should be knowing about um, bridal trails and uh, yeah just such beautiful purple